welcome to the Creative Tree House. My name is Robin Broom, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks for joining me in the Tree House today. Today's project is another, believe it or not, watercolor landscape using stamps. And this time, we are going to be featuring uh, Grace's Garden this stamp set and we're, we're going to be using the gate and some of the flowers and this is the first time that I've gotten to to use the this stamp set it was in the mini catalog and it is carrying over to the annual catalog and then for all the other bits and pieces we are going to be using my meadow several things from my meadow to give grass and um, a pathway and some things from the waterfront as well and also snow front almost all of the watercolor ones are, we're going to be using different variations well we will also use some stamping blends so I would love to show you how I created this card and what we're going to do is we're going to start with our whisper white cardstock and our whisper white cardstock is cut at five and three sixteenths by three and fifteen sixteenths or in other words it's just uh, a one sixteenth of an inch just one tick mark below five and a quarter and one tick mark below four inches so that's that's our paper we're going to be doing all the other ones that i've done previously were landscape we're going to actually do this one in portrait so and it does it requires masking and what we're going to do first which is kind of strange we are going to put our masks down first all right and i have created the masks and this time i did it sort of the opposite i actually stamped onto the post-it note and then i cut it out i didn't cut it all out but a lot of it so there's uh the gate and then i did two of the to me they look sort of like hollyhocks and we're going to put it to where it's just barely overlapping the post of the gate and then we will do the same on this side okay like that except what we're going to do is we're going to actually reach in here and very carefully take the gate back out leaving the flowers exactly where we had them okay and then we're going to get our squishy pad we need the squishy pad our paper pierce mat and we also need a some scratch paper and we are ready to begin now all right we're going to start with our early espresso and we will do our gate with the early espresso and we will just put it right in here basically where it was it's going to be overlapping the flowers just a little bit there we have our gate all right and we're going to end up doing a little bit more with the gate later with the little extra pickets but i think now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the flowers and we're going to actually stamp our flowers and we're we will be using mossy meadow to stamp our flowers just kind of the outline of our flowers so the first one we're going to do uh, is this one and this i'm going to put on the right hand side of course you can design your own landscape it doesn't have to be like mine and i'm going to look exactly where i had overlapped it and i'm going to put it down so there we have that one and then we're going to use the other one the other one i cut it out as a double but it's actually just a single and we will use the mossy meadow for that and to me it looks maybe like hollyhocks and we'll just put those in here right there and then another one right next to it but not overlapping because it doesn't it does not work to overlap it All right now we've got our flowers on either side of the fence now we're going to go back and we are going to put our flower masks back on get them on there okay it doesn't exactly they don't have to be exact and now we're going to go and do those extra fence posts because I to me you don't have a gate without some of the fence posts 
So we need just our fence posts and we will use our early espresso again and see if we can figure out a way to put, there should be a fence post right about here. So it's just gonna be popping over there and there probably would be one here that's not gonna show and we'll move over and we'll put one here that you're pretty much only gonna see maybe the very top of. All right, I think that that is all of the early espresso, so we can remove that. But let's put our mask back onto our fence, our gate. We'll put it back on because we're going to be doing a lot of the background stuff now. And we may need one for the little one, and I don't. I'm not sure if I have one, but that's okay. We'll continue on. So next, we're going to get the mossy meadow that we used previously and we're going to do way in the back and we're going to do some of the a hillside with which I think this one comes from the snow front the hillside that has the, the evergreens and we're going to put it right about there and we'll do another one in the mossy green just a little bit over here on this side All right, now we're going to get another mask. And this one I kept messing up because I had, I did not have a big enough mask and I was getting carried away. But I have a, a curve, a curvature in here and I'm going to decide where I would like my hill to be. And my hill is gonna start on one side and come down kind of across like, like so. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little more angled. All right, and now we're gonna get um, another stamp, a skinny stamp, this one right here, and we will do Mossy Meadow in it, just a little bit, and come through and do our hill. Some of our trees are gonna disappear, but we're gonna also add some more so it's fine. And just, we want to just kind of outline just the edge of the hill, like that. And then we're also going to need to come in here and we're going to edge right in there. Needs just a wee bit more. All right, now I think we can pull the mask off if we're careful. Uh, let's leave it for a minute and we'll change from the mossy meadow. We'll close up the mossy meadow. We may be finished with that one and we'll move to old olive. We're going to get a little bit lighter using the same stamp. We'll come in and follow the hillside down. And the other hillside as well. I think I can lift my mask up and we'll be okay. Let's get right in here before I do that. Sometimes I get carried away and we end up with greenery in the sky. All right, I, I'll, try to, I'll try to be careful. We'll pull the mask off and we'll do um, one or two more in the old olive. Okay, now we're actually going to stop for just a minute because we need our path and we need our pathway to go all the way up. So we're going to get our Sahara sand and we will use this stamp with our Sahara sand and we're going to stamp like a pathway right in front of the gate. Can, we can even turn it around and maybe do like that. And to me, there's still a little bit of white there and we're gonna cover that up too. So there we have a path. We can try to put it in here. It doesn't work very well with our mask. I've tried rocking it. Sorry, it probably rocked everything. All right, and then we will change stamps and we'll use the one that, to me, it looks a lot like a tornado. <laughs> we're gonna use the this to make the path disappearing into the hillside. So just kind of decide where you want it. And there you go. And I think it needs to be just a touch wider right there. So we'll go like that. Looks good. Okay. Now we can move to our pear pizzazz. Oh, actually, while we have this the Sahara sand out, let's add our 
little rocks, our little speckles, and we'll add that to our, and get it turned where the speckles are there and not on the grass that's upcoming. All right, then we've got our speckles, which can be our little rocks, our pebbles. Now we'll move to pear pizzazz, our lighter one, and we'll keep coming down the hill. We'll go back and use that, that same stamp that we used before. Hang on, I've got a little bit of ink on it. All right, that same skinny one, and just kind of go through and manipulate. So now we can, we know where to go. We know where our path is, and we won't go and cover up our path. All right, I just bring it on down. We can rotate the stamp however we need to get it to fill in most of the white spaces. Like that. This one. Good. Right, and then I think, I know we didn't cover that up. Whoops, I got a little bit in there, didn't I? We didn't cover it up, but I think if I come over here, we can kind of get into the fence there. All right, now what do we need? All right, the only thing I think we need is, let's go back, I think I said we were done. Let's go back with the mossy meadow. And let's put a few more of the fir trees up there. We have the little individual fir trees. And we're going to put a couple in here. Just add some more to it. And we can even, I think there's some bigger ones. There we go. All right. There is a larger one. I don't know if that would mess us up or not. We can, let's try one larger one. See if we can put one right there. Okay, I like that, all right. So there's our trees. Now we're moving back on down with our, back to our pear pizzazz some more. And we will be working our way down. We've pretty much made it to the fence. So, but we are going to change stamps and we're gonna use the, the bigger one. And we're gonna put it in kind of just decide where it is that would work the best and it can overlap with the, just a little bit with the pathway. I'll come through here, get some green. Looks like we need a little bit more right in here. All right, that looks great. Now do the other side, same thing, pear pizzazz. Just filling in over here, wherever it needs to be. It's kind of Trying to walk off. It looks like there might be a little bit on the right underneath the fence, and we can probably move our fence out of the way now because the pear pizzazz is, is very light. So we'll be able to do some pear pizzazz even through the fence and over the flowers. So let's just see if we can. Let's go back and do our, our skinny one again and see if we can just kind of put a little bit of pear pizzazz in here. Definitely need some at the base of the plants. Good. And over here. I think we got some in there. That looks good. Need a little bit more at the top. Because we're going to be using dark colors that's going to cover up the, the pear pizzazz. Alright, looks great. Alright, and now I think we're possibly done with the pear pizzazz. We can close that up. And now I think it's probably time to color. And we are going to start with the fence and the, or the gate, I guess, all of it. And we're going to use the dark a soft suede um, stamping blend. And I used the the brush tip. And then what I did was I would just I did not color completely. I stayed in the lines, but I I left some white space. I just didn't go back across each one because that's pretty much the way the way the stamp is and so I've tried to do the exact same thing and just kind of it's just kind of an easy almost impressionistic feel and so that's what we're going to do just go it can be it can be fairly quick just pretty much stay within the lines but it's okay to to not go back and fill in with the white space 
So this is the Dark Soft Suede Stamping Blend. We'll get all of our, our gate colored in with this, including the back support piece. Now, my husband is an engineer and he made fun of this gate, so I will now never look at this gate <laughs> the same way. So he also does some woodworking projects, so I think maybe structurally there was it might not be a structurally sound gate or built, probably not built to code. <laughs> All right, and let's see if we can find our, here is our other post that we, that we did. It's going to bring it down and we can kind of imagine that there's another one in here or just add a little a little bit of brown behind the flowers where you would think a post might be. Okay, and we can even give it some, maybe perhaps a side piece. Definitely need to have a connection somewhere to the, to the big one, I think. All right, now that was our soft suede. Now we're gonna move to, if we did these flowers, I used a dark, the dark, Rococo Rose. And again, you don't have to be very super careful. It's okay to have the white spaces. Not lots, but some. All right, so then we've got those little flowers done. And I use, it's not a, not a huge contrast, but I, I ended up using the, which one is it? <laughs> Dark Blackberry Bliss for this plant that you can just barely see that comes up. All right, and then sort of a border contrast, I used the uh, dark Pretty Peacock. Ooh, I love Pretty Peacock, one of my favorite colors. I'm sort of sad that it's an in color. I'm gonna reach and change. And so I made the leaves this. It just gives it a little bit, little contrast. It's not the same green. It's actually got a little bit of blue in it. And although it really won't be noticeable, I'm going to use just a tiny bit of the Daffodil Delight, the dark one, and put centers to the flowers. All right, and moving over to what I'm calling the Hollyhocks. We've got the Stampin' Blend and in the Dark Night of Navy. And I am just gonna kinda scribble in, just dot in those things. Doesn't have to be exact. Tall ones are not going to really show because of the the dark mossy meadow behind. And then we're just going to kind of swirl around with the flowers again. Not just kind of a, a quick swirl. Don't have to spend much time on it. You can even mix up which ones are flowers and which ones are leaves sometimes, and it's still. It'll still, still turn out wonderful. All right, and then we've got the dark granny apple green for these leaves. So, again, a little bit of a contrast in the color, different than the greens we've been using. So, we get some leaves. All right, I think we've got all those looking great. Now, we're going to move, we're going to go back to stamps just a little bit. We're going to do the the sky i'm sort of trying to not get off camera there all right and for the sky we're just gonna we're gonna do a couple of clouds and the clouds my clouds have disappeared what happened to my clouds they must, it must be a completely sunny day today <laughs> my clouds have vanished <laughs> okay oh there's the clouds it was right there okay thank you um They've come back, and we're going to use Balmy Blue. And our picture is fairly dark, so I'm going to go ahead and not stamp off like I would sometimes. I'm going to see if maybe, maybe, maybe I can kind of cover up the, the little boo-boo there where I got some greenery in the sky after all. And let's see, maybe one, one one more right there. Okay, so there's our clouds with the balmy blue. 
Now the only thing I think that we need to do is just kind of touch up where there where our mask was covering things up. And then we can use our light old olive. You can use either the brush tip or whatever and just kind of go in just a little bit. Fill in some of those spots like around some of the posts like that. Where there's greenery or should be greenery and we've got too much just a little bit too much white just a dot here and there all right and the same thing we can do that with the the dark crumb cake we can come in and do just actually let's go to the light crumb cake and with the light crumb cake we'll come in here and make it look like that the path is up there on the other side. And we need, let's go back to our light old olive and add a little more in here. There, I think that's pretty good. Oh wait, the yeah, let's use our dark old olive and go around the tops of the hollyhock because that is darker because we were using the mossy meadow and the old olive in this section so it needs to be a little bit lighter or darker like that there I think that that's probably what we need and then the next thing that we need would be our mats for it and I chose to use um, a blueberry bushel and a mossy meadow for those. So the the mats that we need would be the I used a blueberry bushel, which I know is about to retire, and it would be cut at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I used mossy meadow, which is just one eighth of an inch larger than our whisper white, and we would put those down. Right, like that. So, and the only other thing that I didn't show you was I did put a little bit, a few blades of grass with old olive right there just to add dimension. And that was the only difference with the original. So there it is. And I just, I had fun doing it. It's just a lot of fun. It takes, um, it takes quite a bit of, I'll just show you, you might, you might enjoy this seeing what it takes to to create this so there's lots of course this one i just I messed up in this in the sky right there there's this one and this one trying to decide which outlines to do those are all all part of the process so thank you so much for for coming to the treehouse today and for watching and i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope that you'll try this project at home and if you do, let me know what you thought. And if it worked for you, if you have any questions or anything, please leave a comment and uh, let me know what you thought. And if you have questions, and I'll try to get back to you. So thanks again for joining me in the treehouse, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.